Hello and welcome to the Disability Entrepreneurs Festival. Today our guest is Carly Findlay, uh, the fabulous Carly Findlay, who's an author amongst many other things. <laughs> Carly, what's your experience of getting out there and getting your presence known in the market? Well, it's been a long time that I've been doing this um, writing, mostly online. Um, and so building a presence is quite a slow burn. I think um, people expect that you can become a viral sensation overnight. I have only become a viral sensation when my photo was awfully misused on, on Reddit. Um, but for me, it's taken a long time to build a social media audience um, to assist me with my career. So I joined Facebook probably in 2007, Twitter in 2009, and it's only been in the last year or two that I've hit the 10,000 mark on Facebook and Instagram. Now I'm well above that, but it, it took a long time to get to that number. Um, and Twitter, uh, yeah, I'm nearly, nearly at 20,000 and that's taken 10 years. I was just looking at my block list the other day and I only had 246 people on there, which I was really surprised about. Actually, in, for 10 years, only 246 people have annoyed me enough to block them. So, <laughs> that's good. How is it that you can build a following then? Because you're really relying on that as part of your business model. Without that, you're not going to be able to sell things. So how do you build that following? Yeah, well, it's about making yourself credible um, by writing honestly, sharing pictures, sharing regularly. Um, that's really helped me. Um, a few years ago, I went to ProBlogger and ProBlogger was a blogging conference and I, I learned about scheduling things and making a content plan. So it's really just a really uh, a simple content plan. So Monday to Sunday and say on Monday, I would share something of my own, Tuesday, something of someone else's, Wednesday, a photo, and so on. Um, and I mix that up. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't do that anymore, but it certainly helped me. And that's what I, that's what the advice I would give someone that wanting to build a profile by sharing mostly other people's stuff to show you that you care about other people, that you value other people's opinions, that you want to create discussion and sharing a lot of your own stuff as well. Um, but not so much of your own stuff compared to other people's stuff. Although I think Instagram might be a bit of a different thing there where you, you're mostly taking photos of yourself and things that you've seen. So, um, yeah, so it takes a long time. And also one thing I have found is the numbers on social media do not equate to the numbers of things that you will sell or work that you will get. Um, just because I have 16,000 Facebook followers does not mean I have sold that many books. I mean, I might have, but generally not. So it, it really does take a long time to build people's trust enough to ask, it, ask you to do work for them or ask or want to buy your book. Yeah. You used that word trust there and I was interested in um, you're talking about building a following, you're talking about um, getting out there. Yeah. Part of that is about building your brand, isn't it? How do you decide what type of stuff comes under brand Carly and what doesn't? Yeah, I mean, it's tricky. I think brand Carly is about appearance, diversity, fashion, food um, and disability stuff. And so I try and share lots of stuff by other people that's related to that. Um, and it's also about, I feel it's about honesty, being honest about when I'm not so great, when I haven't done so great and apologising, saying when I could do better um, or that I could do better. A few weeks ago, I called out a TV show for being ableist and I called it out publicly on Twitter and also I made a a post in a Facebook group that was related to TV. And I said, if there's anyone from that show in this group that wants actually disabled writers, um, you know, let, let us, let me know because there's so many of us out there. Um, when I immediately, I got lots of, actually in that group, it took a while to get any kind of response. And I said, is anyone talking? But about after that, immediately I got a couple of people that said, you know, this isn't on or we'll put you in touch with someone. And the head of the programming 
the comedy at that particular TV station got in touch with me and we had a meeting on the phone and he said that I actually misheard it. It wasn't ableist and that was great to know that. And he said, he's going to provide me with the scripts and everything. And I could look, um, I work at Melbourne fringe. So the festival was on at that time and I had no time to look, but by the time I looked, I confirmed that it was, yes, I had made a mistake and I'd gone back and I'd written in the Facebook group that we had this discussion and I made a mistake and I have in fact confirmed it was not ableist. Um, and I thank people for their time and all of that. And I did the same on Twitter and I did a little thread to say, you know, I'm sorry, I made, I made a mistake. I'm up up here. Um, I, so I think it is about that and the people that were involved in that to which I was very thankful for me doing that, for me saying, you know, I was wrong here. Um, I do know the TV show has been ableist in other ways. So I provided them that feedback privately. And I said in my email that in hindsight, I probably should have gone to them before mouthing off on my public social media so you know you, you live and learn and i think it's really important not to delete your comments if you have made a mistake because so many people take the time to educate you when you do muck up and so deleting that means that everyone has lost that valuable information if people have commented I'm so hearing from you there a lot of the a lot of the brand trust thing is about being yourself authenticity yeah, absolutely. And I think being autistic, is, uh, autistic, I'm sorry. Oh dear. <laughs> I, I think being authentic is about um, admitting to when you've done wrong and also thanking people who have taught you. Um, you know, lots of people now say that they've heard me talk about inspiration porn, which I have done, but I will always say Stella Young coined that phrase. Absolutely, it did. Carly Findlay, thanks so much for being part of the Entrepreneurs Festival. Thank you so much for having me. Is that it? Do you think that we covered enough? I reckon we did.